This video is going to cover the topic of the mirror method. Be sure the date and topic are at the top of your page. The essential question for this video will be, how do you use mirrors to find the heights of similar figures? Before we talk about our mirrors, we first need to remember the term similar figures. So remember that similar figures have the same shape, they have congruent angles, corresponding angles, and the corresponding sides increase by a constant scale factor. These two images are similar, and I'm looking at the corresponding sides. I'm just going to mark this one here and this one here just so I can kind of show that I would be looking for these markings that match up. Um, but I have corresponding sides, and if I look at each one of them, I notice that if I multiply the small number times 2, I get the larger side. So the corresponding side on the larger copy is two times the length of the original. So that means, of course, our scale factor is two. And we can use this understanding to find the length of missing sides. If we know that these items are similar, we can use this information to find out what is missing. Since they're similar, I'm going to look for a scale factor from the corresponding signs that are labeled here. And I know that um, this is not labeled five, but it's the same as what it is across from it. So I'm just gonna kind of set that up. And I'm gonna set up a proportion. That is, I'll write up equivalent ratios. So I'll do that. I'm just gonna set up these equivalent ratios here. And I know that um, the corresponding side of this, five, is A. So I'm gonna mark those across from one another. And then on that same first rectangle, the short rectangle, I have 7 that corresponds to 56. So that's my proportion. And since I need these to be equivalent, I know that whatever I multiplied 7 by, I'll need to do the same thing to my 5. And this, of course, is my scale factor. So I know that 7 times 8 is 56, which means that I would have to do 5 times 8 to find my missing side. And so I would take the side I don't know, and I would do, oh, 5 times 8 is, oops, excuse me, is 40. So that means my missing side must be 40 right here. A must be 40. Sometimes we need to use our knowledge of similar figures to calculate measurements that we can't reach. So, for example, the top of this tree is really high, and I can't reach the top to measure it. And so we know that we could maybe use a shadow to be a helpful tool, but that really only helps when it's sunny and you are outside. So we're going to look at something we refer to as the mirror method to help us. So looking at this tree, for example, we can use this mirror to figure out the height of this tree. To do this, we would first place a mirror on a spot like a nice level spot, um, a pretty good distance from what we are trying to measure. From there, you would then kind of step back, walk backwards, until you see the top of the object, in this case the tree, in the center of the mirror. Now, this makes two triangles, right? You can see a triangle here, and you can see a triangle here. And these triangles are similar. The angles here near the mirror are congruent. And we know inherently that these are congruent because when um, light hits the mirror, it reflects off the mirror at the same angle. So these two are just inherently congruent, and that's one way that we prove that these are similar triangles. So let's fill in some information for this example. So let's say this student here is 42 inches tall. And let's say that they are standing 60 inches from the mirror. And we can also measure the distance of the mirror from the tree. And we'll say that is 180 inches. And what we're looking for is right here. We're trying to figure out how tall the tree is. So I'm going to set up a proportion so that I can find the scale factor of the missing height. And of course, when I'm setting up my proportion, I have to make sure that I'm keeping things corresponding. So I have the two corresponding short sides across from one another and the two corresponding long sides across from one another as well. So the short side here is the person's height, 42 inches. And that corresponds to, well, our tree. We don't know what that is. The long side of that first triangle is 60, which corresponds to 180. And I can look at this 
and I can say, oh, now that I'm organized, I can see that this means that I've multiplied by three, and I would need to do the same three thing here, right? That's my scale factor of three. And that, of course, means that the height of the tree is three times the height of the student. So I would do 42 times three, and that would get me 126 inches which is about 10 and a half feet tall. So it's similar to some other proportions we've set up, right? We're just making sure that we line up our corresponding sides and then we can find our scale factor to find what is missing. So let's do the same thing with this flagpole and we have some numbers labeled here for us. I'm gonna make sure I do my proportions correctly again. So once again, I'm gonna set this up here with my um, short sides corresponding and I see that my corresponding side here is that this person's height corresponds to the height of the flagpole. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up that 5 corresponds to my height. And I know that 8 feet is the long side of this triangle that corresponds to the 24 on the other side. And I noticed pretty much right away that my corresponding sides here um, increased by 3. That scale factor is 3, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply this by three as well, which means my flagpole must be 15 feet tall, right? Five times three is 15. But just like um, we've seen before, there's more than one way to solve this. So I could set up my same proportion of five over eight and h over 24. And if I wanted to, I could use that butterfly method, right? So I could multiply five times 24, which would get me 120. And then I could divide it by eight which also gets me 15 feet. So either way I do it, I get the same result, but there's more than one way to approach that. So I'll leave you with one here to try on your own, right? We have our two um, similar triangles that we've made with our mirror, and I've labeled the lengths of these. And so your job will be, of course, to find the scale factor and to find a proportion that can tell you um, how tall the tower is. So make sure you fill all this in and bring it with you to class. And we're going to try um, out this method a little bit together in class as well. So if you have questions about it, make sure you bring those um, to class to ask. And remember, the essential question for this video was how can we use mirrors to find heights of similar figures? And so hopefully this gave you a little introductory um, introduction to that.